We're now going to do some examples of Stokes' theorem. So example one will be where the vector field F has no Z component. So it just has the form PQ0. And let's also assume that P and Q do not depend on Z. They only depend on X and Y. So basically we're starting with a two-dimensional vector field in the plane and sort of extending it to a three-dimensional vector field in the simplest possible way. And let's assume that the surface S is a domain in the xy plane. with the upward orientation. Okay, so it looks like this. So here's, here are the axes. And here's S, which is flat. It's just on the, in the xy plane. Now the upward orientation means that the unit vector, unit normal vector we use is going to be 0, 0, 1. So n is 0, 0, 1. The other alternative would be 0, 0, minus 1. That would be the downward orientation. And then we can see that the boundary curve is oriented like this. So that's what positively oriented means. This agrees with the previous definition of positively oriented that we gave for curves in the plane, which are boundaries of regions in the plane. OK, so what does Stokes' theorem say? So Stokes' theorem. says that the integral over c of f dot dr is the double integral over s of the curl of f del cross f dot ds. Or I can write this as dot n ds for the element of arc length. So this is, this is um, equivalent to ds. Okay. Um, now, what's the curl of f? So f is pqr, so the curl of f is d by dx, comma d by dy, comma d by dc, cross pq0. And since I'm dotting this with 0, 0, 1, I don't care about the x and y components of this. So it's something comma, something comma, and then the z component is ddx of q minus ddy of p. So it, it's qx minus py. So um, we get that the double integral over s of the curl of f dot n ds is equal to the double integral over s of qx minus py. And this ds, this is, since this is just a surface on the plane, this is the this ds without the arrow on it, that's just the element of, of area in the plane, as before. So, so Stokes' theorem tells us that the integral over c of f dot dr is equal to the double integral of our plane domain of qx minus py dA. These two are equal. And of course, this is Green's theorem. So we've recovered Green's theorem. So Green's theorem is a special case of Stokes' theorem in which the surface is a flat surface in the xy plane. The Stokes' theorem generalizes this to curved surfaces, which are not necessarily in any plane. OK, our next example. is suppose f is conservative i.e. f is the gradient of some function lowercase f. So Stokes' theorem says that if I have an oriented surface s with positively oriented boundary c then the integral over c of f dot dr 
is the double integral over s of del cross del f um, dot ds. So this is um, the curl of the gradient of lowercase f. Now, is this true? Well, we know that this left-hand side, integral over c of f dot dr, this is zero by the fundamental theorem of line integrals because you get the function lowercase f evaluated at the start and endpoints of the curve, but for any parameterization of this curve, the starting and endpoints will be the same because it's a closed curve. The boundary of a surface is always a closed curve. Okay, or, or maybe several closed curves. Um, and what about this term over here? Well, we know that the curl of a gradient is zero. Informally, if you think of del as a vector of differential operators, then it cross itself is zero, because any vector cross itself is zero. So we know that this is zero, and the integral of zero is zero. So in this case, what Stokes' theorem is telling us is that zero equals zero. So it works. Um, now there's a nice converse here. So um, this is a theorem that if f is defined at all of our three, and the curl of f is, is zero, then f is conservative. Um, and the proof, well, we know that it's enough to show that the integral over c of f dot dr equals zero for all closed curves c. And in fact, you don't really need all closed curves c. You just need some curves which are made of sort of going in the coordinate directions a few times. Um, and so you can restrict attention to some simpler curves, and in particular, I won't explain all the details of this, but you can can restrict attention to the case where um, uh, C is simple and the boundary of an oriented surface S. Um, so then, if you use the positive orientation, I mean, we're trying to prove that this integral is zero, so it doesn't matter which orientation you use, you should get zero either way. So then with the positive orientation, if we give C the positive orientation, then Stokes' theorem tells us that the integral over C of f dot dr is the double integral over s of the curl of f dot ds. But I'm assuming up here that the curl of f is zero, so this is zero everywhere. And so this whole integral is zero, which is what I wanted to show. And so that, that proves it. Okay, so it's and so again, it, if you assume the curl is zero everywhere, to prove that it's conservative, you need to prove that the integral is zero over all closed curve C. Actually, I think I only proved this fact in two dimensions, but it's true in any number of dimensions that a vector field is conservative if and only if the line integral around all closed curves is zero. It's the same argument. Um, so, and then to prove this, then you just use Stokes' theorem. You, you have to argue that you can reduce to a case where this is the boundary of a surface, and then the integral over this curve is the integral of the curl over the surface, and that's zero. Done.